They're the modern day originators of the cruise industry. The first company to create a cruise ship that was a destination in itself and the first company to tear up the rule book of set time dining and singles as an afterthought. Today on Planet Cruise Weekly, we're asking the question, just who are Norwegian Cruise Line? So, hello and welcome to episode 53 of Planet Cruise Weekly. I'm Keith, this is Glenn, and uh, we are your, your hosts of this fine programme. Uh, in our second year now. In our, sec in our second year already. Mm, I know. Um, and this particular episode is part of our continuing series in where we focus on a particular cruise line and we look at the history, the style and the passenger experience of that cruise line in more detail. Now today it's all about NCL or Norwegian Cruise Lines who despite their names su uh, that suggest they're very much an American cruise line and a company for whom we have a lot to say thank you for because without their pining work in the 1960s the cruise industry might never have been born. So let's start at my favourite bit of any of these sessions and that's looking at the history. I know you find it boring Glenn but I absolutely love pouring over the history and it all began for Norwegian Cruise Lines back in 1966. We won the World Cup that year. We did win the World Cup. Well did you know Good that? historical fact. Yes I did. Yeah, I've met the team on no. a cruise funnily enough. Oh, really? um, You worked on a cruise did you? I did yeah several of them. <laughs> so it began in 1966 with a gentleman called Nut Kloster and uh, he was one of Norway's most respected uh, shipping godfathers. He started the company with a gentleman you might be familiar with, Ted Arison, and it is, yes, that Ted Arison. And together they founded something called the Norwegian Caribbean Line. And they had a small ex ferry called the MS Sunwood. They sailed out of a little lone port of Miami. And basically, she was the first ever modern day cruise ship where they offered the revolutionary new concept of regularly scheduled cruises in a single class atmosphere of informal luxury. There you go. Now, the ship is no longer simply a means of transportation. It becomes a destination unto itself, offering guests an exciting, affordable alternative to the land-based resorts. And as you can imagine, the idea caught on, and by 1971, the line had already added four more vessels. Now, this is where it starts to get really, really interesting, because in 1972, Ted Arison... Sorry, can you tell me who is Ted Arison? <laughs> you surely you know. Ted Arison, as in the father of Mickey Arison, yeah. as in the head of Carnival. Yeah, but... Does everybody else out there know? Well, hopefully. Right. Okay, well, I'll explain it. Just, just listen, hang on. Okay. Listen. Right, so <laughs> he left the Norwegian Caribbean line to found Carnival Cruises. Oh. And rumours still abound today that he took money uh, and reservation records with him to, to get the new startup off the ground, which left Norwegian Cruise Lines, or what was still known then, as um, Norwegian Caribbean lines in total disarray. And of course, it's led to this long standing and sometimes quite bitter rail between the two. Still to this day, there's aggro where if the ships go past each other in port in Miami. Um, and in fact, if you want to find out, because this is a fascinating area, if you want to find out about this more, then I recommend a great book. It's called Devils of a Deep Blue Sea The Dream Schemes and Showdowns That Built America's Cruise Ship Empires. Um, you can get it on Amazon and other various platforms, and it's, shall we say, very eye opening. Now in 1977, NCL purchased their own Caribbean island, Great Stirrup K, becoming the first cruise ship line to offer a private out island experience as part of their itineraries. Then in August 1979, they purchased famous transatlantic liner, the SS France, and spent $100 million to rebuild her for Caribbean cruising. Now she was the largest ship of her time when Norwegian Cruise Lines rebuilt her, and the company takes advantage of all this extra space to create a greater than usual variety of onboard entertainment options, thus paving the way for a new era of cruise ships that are essentially destinations in themselves. And they renamed this ship the SS Norway. Now, it wasn't until 1987 that Norwegian Caribbean Lines became Norwegian Cruise Lines, reflecting their expanding offer of itineraries, as in the 90s, they grabbed the headlines for the celebrity godmothers who launched their ships with household names like Diana Ross and Barbara Bush. You're going to ask me who they are? No, I know who they are. Okay, yep. that's good. Now, in 2000, they again turned the industry on its head with the introduction of freestyle cruising, offering guests a more relaxed, resort-style cruise experience with complete flexibility. All marks of this program include up to 10 restaurants, resort casual attire each night, increased crew to guest staffing, and the elimination of recommended cash tipping, and a leisurely disembarkation procedure rather than just 
kicking everyone off straight away. Now see, when I started with Ocean Village in 2003, we carried that thing on and we did the freestyle dining. You don't have to dress up at night, and mm. no tipping or anything like that. And a lot of younger families, and that's how cruising I think has really developed, have now been introduced to it. Before it was a little, very stifled, you had to wear the, the dinner mm. suits every night. It was geared to more of an older clientele. And I think Norwegian and Ocean Village, as I say, who I work for, really turned it on ahead and made it acceptable for everyone to go Certainly, on. Certainly in the UK, Ocean Village did And it. more affordable. But, but, in, but in, the, in, in the US, and on a more of a wide world, yeah. it, was, it was Norwegian that started it. But definitely in the, in the UK, yeah. Ocean Village were the first, yeah. first to do that. Yeah. Now, in the last few years, the accolades and innovations have continued. They've introduced ice bars, resident Broadway shows, and even translucent bathrooms. Yes, you did hear me correctly. Translucent bathrooms, don't even think about it. But for me, they'll always have my respect for being the first cruise company to return to home port in New Orleans after Katrina. So let's have a look now at the fleet. There are a total of 14 ships in the current fleet, with a 15th Norwegian Joy launching in March 2017 and the 16th Norwegian Bliss planned for 2018. They both have the unique status of having been built specifically for the market they're sailing in with Joy heading out to China, as many of the new cruise ships are now, and the Bliss over to the cold uh, extremities of Alaska. Now, they've launched three brand new ships since 2013 and incredibly spent over $400 million refurbing the rest of their fleet over the past two years alone. And that's been part of what they call the Norwegian Edge Programme, uh, which you'll be excited to know, Glenn, actually includes the addition of USB outlets in the cabins. Every time there's any new available, as long as you've got a USB in the outlet in your cabin, <laughs> you're happy, aren't you? Absolutely. <laughs> Plus, they announced earlier this month further plans to build another 440,000 tonne ships at the Finn Cantonary shipyard over the next few years. Not much is known about them at this stage, apart from the fact that they will be built with environmentally friendly technology at their heart. Now, Freestyle Cruising sits very much at the centre of the Norwegian fleet. And on their newest ships, this means a number of amenities such as the luxury ship within the ship complex, the Haven, uh, adult only sun decks, martini and champagne bars, large spas, thermal suites, interconnecting cabins, ropes courses, water parks, and electronic restaurant reservation systems. But even the oldest ship in the fleet, the Norwegian Spirit, still has an incredible 11 restaurants on board, despite the fact that she only carries 2,000 passengers. So let's get your head around that. Okay, if you're a keen cruise ship spotter when you're out on your travels, then a top tip would be you can always recognise a Norwegian ship by its colourful hull art. Following the success of this with its legions of loyal fans, for its most recent ships, the line has hired famous artists to create designated influence designs. Now, these include Peter Max, who did the New York influence breakaway hull. Uh, there was Guy Harvey, who did Miami's Norwegian Escape. Uh, David Lebo, Le Batard, who did the Norwegian Getaway. And then you've got upcoming ship artist paintings, including uh, the marine artist uh, Wyland for Alaska's Norwegian Bliss, and also the Chinese artist Tang Ping for the Shanghai-based Norwegian Joy. So what about the onboard ambience, Glenn? Well, this is an unashamedly American cruise experience with a very relaxed dress code and very loud modern decor. Mm. Now, if you're looking for a more traditional, more formal, classic cruising experience, then this won't be for you. You don't have to dress up for dinner. There's always a competition or event to get involved in, and there is lots of dining options, although a good proportion of them do cost extra, which isn't everyone's cup of tea. See what I did there? Talking yeah. about food, not everyone's cup of tea. But you don't have to pay for that. The tea? Yeah. No. No, unless it's really posh yeah. yeah. Now the other clear difference is that due to the incredible choice and flexibility of the freestyle cruising experience, there is far less structure on board Norwegian ships. Um, every day and night can be completely different from the last and it's much easier to remain anonymous on board and not to have to bump into that couple that you're desperately trying to avoid. You know the couple that you sit down with on the first night? Yeah, and I, I know exactly what I'd avoid on a cruise ship. Yeah. The crowd is diverse, but primarily American, and they seem to attract a very broad age range with young families, couples, retirees, and a good many cruisers with disabilities owing to the excellent onboard facilities. Now, fans of my old ship Ocean Village, as we've mentioned before, and Thompson Cruises will really enjoy the atmosphere and experience on board Norwegian Cruise Line. Now, at the heart of Norwegian Cruise Line's freestyle approach is the dining. 
And in fact, there's more restaurants than days of the week, and you can certainly enjoy food from all over the world and, and dine and dress as you please. There's trendy French bistros, steakhouses, sushi bars, and Norwegian Cruise Lines offers tons of different choice. You could dine romantically with an a la carte seven course menu or quickly grab some Spanish tapas with friends. You could be serenaded in a private candlelit corner or breathe in the fresh air and be served al fresco as the, as the moonlight kisses your brow. You like that? Oh, very nice. Quite romantic. Yeah, very nice. Now, if you're vegan, vegetarian, high carb, low carb, or gluten free, it's all covered. Oh, and I did forget to mention there's a 24 hour pizza delivery. However, along with the rest of the room service, it does come with a service charge. Now, if you do like a slightly more traditional experience or you're maybe looking at watching the pennies, they do have a traditional main dining rooms which do serve good hotel quality food. But where Norwegian really shines is the speciality restaurants. Now, as a rule of thumb, the newer the ship, the wider the variety, with the latest, the Escape, having 20 different dining options, not including the room service. But do be warned, we have mentioned it a couple of times, many of these do carry a cover charge or a price a la carte and require reservations. But that said, you are paying a fraction of what this food would cost landside. Exactly. Now, of course, people are very interested about the cabins and the accommodation. So Norwegian Cruise Lines offers one of the widest selections of accommodation in the industry. And all of it are both comfortable and modern. Yes, it's true that the newer ships tend to have a slightly more compact cabins than the old tonnage. But this is counteracted by an abundance of brilliant interjoining family staterooms that are cleverly located near all the kids' facilities. And it's here that Norwegian has, again, really innovated the ideas. Yeah, you see, the idea of grouping certain cabin types nearer to each other and the facilities most likely to be enjoyed by those passengers has proved wildly successful. It's being copied now by other lines as well. And they were the first company to design solo cabins on board their ships with no single supplement, which of course is a big bonus for solo travellers, but also they cleverly grouped them within a key access only private complex where fellow solo cruisers could hang out in a dedicated lounge. And this really has revolutionised the approach to solo yeah, cruising. Yeah, Norwegian's one of the only cruise line. I mean, we get a lot of single passengers phone up and they always get a bit, you know, upset that, you know, they only have to pay for two people to go in a cabin. Mm. Now, the studio cabins they have on there will always be more expensive per, for the cabin than a per person for an inside cabin. Yeah. They always will, but you're definitely not paying a single supplement. And as I said, with that lounge that you have there as well, you know, you can go into that lounge, you can meet other single travellers, put your name up on their boards as well. I want to eat in this restaurant tonight and someone else will join you. So it is a it's good a idea. Great way of making friends. And it's probably the best ship at sea to do that. And following this blueprint, they've more recently introduced luxurious spa cabins that are near the fitness centre and thermal suites, and also a suite class area called The Haven, where again, private keycard access will allow you to enjoy your very own restaurant, sun deck, sauna, spa area, and whirlpool. So again, very much that one is based off the Cunard grills and the MSC. Of yeah, I mean, you pay a lot more money for The Haven suite, but you pay for what you get. You if do. you want that, you know, you do the same hotel, but as I said, and then you get the other amenities as well, you get the drinks packages and all those sorts of things. It's a luxury. It's a luxury cruise ship experience within a more yeah. traditional cruise ship. Exactly. Okay, another great feature of freestyle cruising is the abundance of entertainment. Um, and this really is where I think Norwegian Cruise Lines really, really stand out. They've got exuberant musical productions, including Broadway and off-Broadway shows, which often have their own dedicated venue and play all crews. They have comedy from Chicago-based award-winning Second City, uh, live bands, lounge singers, piano bars, DJs, and then my favourites, things like How to the Moon, which is an incredible uh, piano bar with these dueling pianists, and they take requests. You have kind of almost karaoke books on the, on the tables where you can kind of say, can you play this one for me? And they've also got uh, incredible partnerships. They used to have one with the Blue Man Group, and then uh, amazing dining experiences with the acrobatics of people like the Cirque Dreams Dinner. So this really is uh, a very unique experience. It's not a one theatre, one show a night experience, which is true of many different cruise companies. With this, you really won't know where to start, and if anything, there's, there's too much choice. It's incredible. Now, Goofy Pool games are also a Norwegian staple, and the ship's bands crank up the volume during the afternoon and evening deck parties making for a fun and party-orientated nightlife. Passengers could get into the act by taking part in talent shows or step up to the karaoke microphone, and if you like a flutter, then the casinos are a good size. Now yes, during the day, there's all the usual deck games, such as shuffleboard, there's the art auctions that you may be familiar with, perfume seminars, gaming lessons and port talks. And there's also, of course, the Steiner Run Mandara Spas, where you can get your teeth whitened, maybe get a shot or two of Botox, um, and all the ships have a very good sized fitness center. 
Now the other thing I do want to mention, and this is of the start of March 2017, so obviously this is when this is still running at the moment, is their extra packages they have when you book certain cabins. So if you book an inside cabin, you will get one of these benefits. If you book an ocean view or above, you will get two of these benefits. Now the first benefit is the all-inclusive drinks package. They've been running this now for about 18 months, but generally if you book your cruise two or three months before, you can include that drinks package and that's part of the cost. And that is a massive, massive saving and everybody takes that. The other options you then have is a dining package, depending on how long your cruise is. That's how many times you can eat in some of those speciality restaurants. You will either get onboard spend or Wi-Fi. So normally people take the uh, beverage package and then one of the others. Inside cabin, you'll get one of those. Ocean view and above, you'll normally get two. If you book a haven or above, you'll get all four. And that's of about February, March 2017. That's still ongoing at the moment. Good advice. And if you want to find out more information about that, click the link and it will take you through to some of our experts such as Glenn, who will be happy to help. Now, Norwegian Cruise Lines are known for being very, very family friendly. They've got one of the largest children's programs in the industry and one of the largest provisions for age demographic as well, because they go from six months all the way up to 18. Now, well-trained staff offer age-appropriate events ranging from parties and video arcades to kid-friendly learning sessions. And a particular note is the Guppies program. This is the one that really impresses me. Um, it's a range of sensory-based activities for children aged six months up to three, which I know is something close to your own heart, having a, a young two-year-old, Glenn. Yeah, well, my cruise last year we went on, uh, they had nothing really, because she was only 16 months old, so she'd go and play with a couple of toys, but there was nothing for them. So to do something like this is really good, because we did feel she missed out a little bit. Exactly, and this is, this is an area which many cruise lines do neglect, but of course Norwegian are ahead of the game here. And so as long as the parent is in attendance, there is a whole host of different sensory-based activities that they can get involved with. And there are also teen centres, discos, kids' pools, and even a port day or evening aboard child sitting service for three to 12 year olds. Now, from their USA home ports, of which there are many, you can fly cruise to the Caribbean, Hawaii, Alaska, the east coast of the USA, Bermuda, Cuba, Mexico, the Panama Canal, South America, I could go on. Um, and from 2018, they're gonna have a dedicated ship, the Bliss, which is gonna be specific, or is being specifically built for Alaska. Now, top of my tip list though, is that Norwegian is the only mainstream cruise line to have a ship that sails year round in Hawaii. Now, that would be a tough job to be a tour manager. <laughs> Built and staffed by Americans, oh well, let's, let's that out. In accordance with the Jones Act, Pride of America is the choice for cruisers who want to maximise their time in the islands as you fly into Honolulu rather than spend four days sailing there. And four days sailing back. Exactly. So yeah. you really do get to maximise your time. Now, another unique plus in my book is the fact that the Caribbean islands uh, and itineraries for Norwegian cruise lines will often feature their own privately owned island, Great Stuart Cay, which has been a popular stop since they bought it in 1977. But now they're also introducing their latest land-based destination, it's called Harvest Cay, and it's located in southern Belize. It's a 75-acre oasis featuring expansive pools, a lagoon for water sports, beautiful beaches, acres of it and acres of it, shore excursions, and access to the world's second largest barrier reef, which as a scuba diver is, nice, eh? is a dream come true. So, Hopefully that gives you a bit more of an idea about Norwegian cruise lines, a bit more of an idea of what it would be like to cruise with them. Um, I mean, where do you think they sit in the sense? Well, if, if we're trying to find comparisons, we've, we've, we've talked about the fact that people that like in the UK that loved Ocean Village and Thompson, would, you know, would probably enjoy Norwegian cruise lines. Who else would you compare I love them. in the American I, market? I would go. We, we, we've been looking at our cruise this year and we're trying to get on them. Um, but I think if you're a family, and I think with all ages of children, to be quite honest, I would put them on a par with Royal Caribbean, but I would put them at a four star on there. If you want formal nights, you want to walk around just with your partner and dress up at night time, don't book one of these cruises. If you're going with a family of all ages, you want to have a good time, you want to go to some great destinations, mm. have a drinks package included, and basically see some great shows, entertainment, acrobats, and that's these, sh these ships are absolutely brilliant. And as I said, they've got a really, really good um, itinerary space as well. So just mm. check them out, they're really, really good. Okay, well, now it's time to say thank you to people that have been um, chatting to us, that have been leaving comments, and we do encourage that, please. You know, a lot of these shows are based around your comments, your feedback, and what you want to see and hear. If people do want to comment, or do want to get in touch with them, what do they do? Loads of different ways. You can contact us at hello at planetcruise.co.uk. You can check us out on Facebook, Twitter. Make sure you go onto our YouTube channel as well. Subscribe, like us, watch some of the old shows. There's 53 to watch, that'll keep you going one night. And as I said, if not, go onto our website, planetcruise.co.uk. Now, 
I want to say a big thank you to these people that have got in touch. The first one is to Janice Shida, um, and she was commenting on the, the Cunard Prize and competition that we're currently running on Facebook. She said, uh, done, I've just entered a wonderful prize and definitely the best cruise line. So she is a, a dedicated Cunard. I wonder, Janice, if you are watching, did you ever cruise with me when I was with her? Or Glenn, did you, do you recognise either of us from our Cunard days? Maybe. Um, and the other one is a wonderful reference from Catherine Ryan, who's a friend of the show, in reference to a, a blog about cruise shows. Um, and interesting the fact that sometimes you don't always get the best deal at some of these cruise shows. Um, Catherine said, I went to one last year and would never go again. They said they couldn't match or better the price from their agents. I got a better deal by phoning Planet Cruise. Listen, you will never get a better price than from a travel agent. You never book directly with a cruise line. You always book with an agent because we can take a little bit of money off. They've got to settle the price on the screen. From the horse's mouth. Literally. See you soon. Take care.